Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here and today we're going to be chatting over Skype with Australian country music singer Melinda Schneider about her new single, My Voice. Hi Melinda, how are you going today? Hi hey, Lauren, I'm really great. You? Yeah, I'm fantastic. Welcome to Rave It Up. It's a pleasure to finally have you on the show. Oh, it's good to be chatting with you. Yeah, I've been trying to get you on really since uh, your lovely partner Mark Gable came on for an interview. <laughs> oh, thanks Lauren. No, you're welcome. Uh, since this is your first time on the show, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. And I think we should start from the beginning because that only makes sense too, right? <laughs> sure. You started performing at the age of three, didn't you, with, with your mum? <laughs> yes, I did. Very, very early. Born into a musical family and uh, showbiz family. And um, yeah, was on stage very early and recorded when I was eight, firstly. So, wow. yeah. Wow. So it was. It was inevitable. Like, did they kind of push you to do it or music was always what you wanted to do? Um, I didn't feel pushed, but, you know, I don't know. It just was a given. It wasn't even pushed. It was just natural. It was just a natural thing to go on stage, I suppose, at a young age. Yeah, it was before I had a choice, put it that way. I'm doing things a little bit differently with, um, with my little boy. You know, I don't really believe in, in doing that to kids. Um, I think you've got to let them, you know, make the decision for themselves when they're able to make that decision. So I'm, I'm not really in a grant with, with going on stage at three, put it that way. Exactly. And for both his parents to be in the music industry, you know, it's good that you're both not pushing him. <laughs> no way. No. Just, he's got to be himself. Of course. Got to make sure he finds his passion in life as well. And yeah. your mum was a yodeler, so can you yodel as well, or? Well, she still is, and um, I can, but I, I don't very much. It's not really my thing. I don't particularly um, enjoy doing it myself, um, even though, you know, I was yodeling from a very early age. Um, it's just not my passion, I guess. You know? And, and mum's fantastic at it. I love what she does. I think she's one of the best in the world and really the most original with what she does in the world. She's created all of these different musical genres even with her stuff. So I'm so proud of her and, um, you know, not taking anything away from her at all, but it's just not my passion. So, no, I, I don't really yodel very much. Oh, well, that's all right. You, you've taken a totally different step into the music industry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, we love country music here in my family and I still remember like it was yesterday when my mum introduced me to your music. She played me your song, I Want to Be Married, and I still love that because, you know, what girl doesn't want to be married and single too? <laughs> Such a great song. Even though, you know, that was back 2004, it is still a tune that I listen to. <laughs> Oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah, look, when you're young, I guess, you know, that's um, that'd be the ultimate, having the best of both worlds. But I think as you get older, you're just quite happy to be in a stable relationship without too much excitement anywhere else. <laughs> of course. It's kind of like when you're young, it's like the girl anthem. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Now, another passion of yours is Doris Day. So if people don't know, you have done a couple of albums filled with Doris Day songs. How did you come around to loving her music? Did you, did your family introduce you to her? And uh, Yeah, look, the first um, exposure I had to Doris Day was uh, on really watching the Saturday afternoon movie on Channel 9, just watching Calamity Jane. And I loved her as, um, as the, the root and toot and whip, crack and chop, shoot and tomboy. She was just so beautiful in that she could sing, dance and act and she was funny. And I still love that film. It still stands up today, I reckon. And she is still alive as well. So have you had the chance to meet her yet? I haven't had the chance to meet her, no. Uh, but I did send her the script to my stage show back in 2011 when I wrote it. And I wanted to make sure she was happy with it. So um, I sent it over to her and she came back and said, yes, I'm happy with the way you're portraying me. And, you know, she sort of gave me the thumbs up, which was really nice. Oh, that's so lovely. So she knows who you are. That's very exciting. Yeah. Oh, she may not remember, but, yeah, I did send her the script. And, and for a fleeting moment, she uh, she was aware of the show. So fingers crossed. 
Frost, you might meet her in the future. You never know. She's 96. I don't know that she meets too many new people, but you never know. Never say never. She's doing pretty good for 96. <laughs> now, your latest song out now is My Voice, and it is so beautiful. The songwriting is so incredible and strong. I did hear that you wrote this, what, nearly two years ago. That's quite a yeah. long time ago. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Um, yeah, I wrote the song nearly two years ago over in Nashville with uh, Tamara Stewart, who's an Aussie singer-songwriter, country artist, um, and another guy called Clay Mills, who's a Nashville songwriter. And um, I wanted to write a song about women speaking out, using their voices, not being silenced. And I knew that, of course, for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, it's been a problem for people. Um, and I always intended for this song to be on my new album, which is coming out in August. But um, but when the Harvey Weinstein story broke late last year and the Me Too movement really took off, I decided I had to get the song out there quickly because I was seeing all of the same words in the media that are in my song. <laughs> I was, this is meant to be, I've got to get it out. So um, I sent it to Tracy Spicer, just the demo of it and said, Tracy, I've got this song. Um, is there anything you, know, you could do with it? And she called me in January and said, I'm starting up a new initiative called Now Australia, which is going to stop sexual harassment in the workplace. And would you like to be an ambassador? And I said, yes. And do you need a song? And she said, yes. So that's really the way it all came about. That's fantastic. How long did the songwriting process take for you? Did the song just come naturally to you? Yeah, look, it didn't take too long. I think we were there for about you know three, three, four hours, something like that. Um, it, it happened pretty quickly. Yeah, just one of those those ones that happened quickly. They're the best sort of songs. I think so. Yeah, to be. Now, I have watched a previous interview with you too, and I did hear that this is something close to your heart. Is that true? That it kind of happened to you when you were in Nashville or something very close to it? Yeah, look, you know, I think a lot of um, music artists have had, you know, some unfortunate kind, kinds of experiences along the way. And uh, over in Nashville, I've, I did have a, a situation with a co-writer that was inappropriate and, um, you know, got, got a bit physical and threatening for me. And I just, in that moment that, you know, he was inappropriate, I just said sit down you're not getting off that seat we're finishing this song if you come near me again i'm going out into that office and telling everyone what you did so um he was propositioning me but you know pushed me up against the wall and it was just it was inappropriate behavior um at the time i was in that moment i was scared and shocked but somehow i found the strength to to shut him up put him in his place and finish the song <laughs> So we sat for another hour or so and, and finished writing this song, which was in really crazy. You're such um, a strong woman. Well, thank you. You don't know what you're going to do until these things happen to you. Sometimes, you know, I had another incident where I didn't say anything to the person. I just kind of, you know, smoothed it over. I didn't get aggressive with them because it didn't feel I wasn't able to in that moment. So you just don't know what you're going to do when these things happen. Um, and that's why I think we've got to be very careful of judging women and judging the victims because unless you've had it happen, mm. unless you were there in that room, you don't really know uh, what went on for, for the person. And the fact that they might come out and talk about something 10, 20, 30 years later is fine as far as I'm concerned. You just come out and talk about it when you're able to, you know, but you do eventually speak up about it. And I'm hoping that my song will help women to find the courage to speak up and tell people um, anything that's going on for them in their lives, any difficult situation. And for men or, or teenagers or kids who are experiencing, you know, bullying at school or cyberbullying or whatever, just talk about it because that, that is the way out of it, is to talk about it. So you never reported him at all? I didn't report him. No, I didn't even tell anyone in that publishing company in Nashville that it happened because it was all male-dominated and I didn't want to get a bad reputation and have people perhaps think that I it was my fault or whatever. I just, you know, it was my first big songwriting session in Nashville. So you don't want to rock the boat. 
I didn't say anything until years later, about five years ago, I actually told one of the, the male publishers who used to work at that company. And he said, Melinda, why didn't you tell us at the time? He was a horrible guy. And I said, well, I just didn't. I just kept it to myself, you know, and that's what a lot of people do. Yeah, because who knows, you might have made the situation worse. Well, I don't know. It, would, it probably wouldn't have been great for me at the time. That, this was like nearly 20 years ago. So that's why times are changing and it's a really great thing. People are listening now, so you can speak up because people, more people are listening. Exactly. It's great that you're speaking up as well. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And the music video for this song is out now as well, and it features people singing along to the song. How many video submissions did you get? Uh, I think I got about 60 or 70, yeah, which was amazing. And I'm, I'm still asking people to send me more because I want to make a, a different video clip with different people in it. So, um, but yeah, it was great to see people sending me in their performances or lip, lip syncing to, to my voice, literally my voice. And, you know, seeing the, the emotion in their performances and, and you could see their pain and it was just, I thought that this kind of video clip would be so much more powerful than just having, you know, a nice looking music video of me singing the whole thing. Why don't, it's not about me. Why don't we make it about everyone else, you know? So, yeah, it was cool. I loved the woman in the shower and the lady doing the sign language. It really shows that you had every type of person in the video and it was just so beautiful to watch. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I tried to make it very diverse and, um, you know, not leave anyone out. Yeah, and you didn't. It was fantastic. <laughs> you did also feature celebrities in the video like Jessica Rowe, Amanda Keller, Amber Lawrence, Damien Leith and your partner Mark. Did they all offer to do it or did you approach them and ask them if they'd like to be involved? No, I asked them all. You know, there were people who didn't want to be involved and said no, and I was like, okay, fair enough, and I just kept trying to find people who, who got the idea and, and who believed in what I was trying to do. So, yeah, it turned out well. Oh, that's great. I've actually, I've had Amber Lawrence and Damien Leith on the show too, and once I, once I saw them pop up, I was like, ooh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And did you, did you film all of your parts in your house, or where was that? <laughs> Yeah, I did some of them in my house, some um, at my photographer's house. So, yeah, a couple of different places. Oh, yeah. Beautiful shots. Thank you. Well, Mark filmed those. Oh, yeah, great videographer good. too. Yeah, on the iPhone. The whole video was filmed on an iPhone. Everyone's iPhones. Yeah, exactly. Well, because otherwise I think there would have been a big difference between each shot otherwise. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, Melinda, even though you've already achieved so much in your career, what else can we expect from you in the future? You've got your album coming out later this year in August, and then are we expecting a tour or...? Yeah, I will be touring um, from about September on, and um, really looking forward to, to taking this new show on the road, um, which is all really... Trace is kind of my life story, but um, I think it's, it's a story that a lot of women will be able to relate to because we all really go through the same stuff, even though not many other people would have had a policeman, dad and a yodeling mum like me. <laughs> That's a bit different. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to performing this new show and, and it's got a storyline and, and all of that throughout it and, um, and the songs are interwoven in the show and... It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to singing some original material again, I guess. You know, I, I have been in Doris Day Land for a while and, and then uh, recorded Great Women of Country with Becky Cole and did that album. And so it's been, um, I've been in concept land for, you know, quite a few years. So it's really great to to get back to singing my own songs. And all the songs on the album are for women, aren't they, or something related to that? Yeah, they, they are. They're all songs that the women can relate to. Um, there's a couple of beautiful love songs about the best kind of man that we would all like. Um, but it celebrates men too. Um, but, yeah, I think it's an album that women are really going to relate to a lot. Well, I'm looking forward to it. You send it to me when it's out and I'll air some of the songs on the radio show for you. That would be lovely. Thanks, Lauren. Welcome. Always here to support you. Supported you, obviously, since the I Want to Be Married song. <laughs> Thanks. Big, long career. And Melinda, would you have any advice for the listeners who might want to follow their dreams of becoming a singer? Oh, well, I think the first one is never give up 
that's the most important. Um, persistence is everything, I think. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something because there's a million people out there who tell you that you can't or that no one's interested in hearing you or whatever. And, um, and listen to people who know. Listen to people who've actually done it and are either still doing it and are successful. Listen to successful people, I would say. Don't listen to, don't take advice from people who've never made it. You know, and I think a lot of people do that. They, they somehow get caught up with people who, you know, have never really done anything and they, they believe everything they say and it's like, well, you know, they actually haven't done anything. You know, if you surround yourself or, or watch people's careers and, and you want to achieve what they've achieved, yeah, let them be the benchmark, I think. Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible advice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully they take it on board as well. Yeah. And before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to, where should they go? Oh, they can go to my website, melindaschneider.com or Facebook. I'm always on Facebook. Um, yeah, either of those two places and, uh, and they'll hear all the latest. Perfect. Easy enough to find you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Melinda. I really appreciate your time. I know that you're a busy woman. <laughs> oh, thanks, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Lovely to meet you in person. Yes. Hopefully we can do a face-to-face -face interview in person one day. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd love that. Maybe even an interview with you and Mark. That'd be... That would be entertaining. A once-off exclusive. That would be fantastic. <laughs> For sure. Well, we'll keep in contact and we'll make it happen. Thanks, Lauren. Good on you. Well, I hope you'll enjoy today's interview. And if you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, make sure to visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.